Good morning, folks. Hope that was okay to take those five seconds for my daughter there. She was the best prize from the Mobile Observatory Project. Anyway, we're starting with yesterday's big story, the filament release. Coronagraph images are updated, and this one tells you what you need to know. The bulk mass will easily miss Earth. Anything coming our way is going to be very tiny, and you can see why it's all going to one trajectory. The releasing portion did eject, but the Earth-facing portion to the right did not. It snapped back down to the sun. Ah, you shy, bro? Anyway, I will show you NASA's updated Enlil spiral, but I can't really explain it. It shows faint CME missing and potential impact from the densest portion. When you see the splash effects next to the satellite images, it's really difficult to get behind NASA's analysis on this one. Either way, they say impact could occur on the 25th. That's Wednesday. Well, what about since that filament eruption? Since the release, the sun hasn't had any other large ejecta events from this side of the disk. Still got sunspots, coronal holes, and plasma filaments of note, however. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find flaring on the rise, nearly cracking M-class range. But the Earth-facing quiet is no rookie. It's the departing spot allowed to give these X-ray events. Meanwhile, Across the face of the sun, to the left we see our incoming active regions, magnetic separation, and quiet conditions here. New gamma ray burst came in yesterday, this one from Sagittarius. Solar wind is quite calm at the moment, and Earth's magnetic shield doing just fine. Folks, the coronal holes visible here are southern negative openings, but what catches my eye a bit more is the positive one coming in over the northeastern limb. The last positive opening got quashed, and this one will face Earth as Saturn conjoins the Sun. Quake watch. But until that time, seismicity is moderate only. Mid-range rumble in Mexico is an Earth spot quake with a tropical storm forming due south of it. Also had another one go off in Venezuela, two rare ones in a week. And the top quake of the day hit Afghanistan. This one actually may have been 6.0. Quick note for Stephen Goddard and others tracking fishy temperature data held by NASA and NOAA. Yesterday I saw this monthly high temperature record reading in Alaska. Wow. Stephen, make sure they don't try to add that one to the official list as it was an error of about 90 degrees. I think someone took that sensor inside. You can't get outside temperature readings like that unless you were to go all the way south almost to the equator at that time. So, yeah. Power low moving east in Canada with the storm line now offshore and the west coast in for more tonight. We'll show the power lows dominating the weather in Europe and down under and then roll shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe everyone.